Welcome back. This is Tuesday, February the 23rd, 2016. Um, I'd like to thank the volunteer crew and Shaw staff that always makes this program happen. Our guest in this segment is Norm Ryder, and we're going to be talking about the danger zones around uh, laptop computers, yes. cell phones, um, I guess cell towers, and etc. It's anything that radiates electromagnetic radiation. And so does this, uh, there's, a, there's, a, um, there's a laptop sitting here that you can't see. So when you say it radiates, so what did you say, radiates? Radiates uh, electromagnetic radiation. Does this do it? This one doesn't, or it radiates very little. All electronic devices radiate some energy, very minimal for most of them. If I plug this one in to charge it, to use a charger, that would give me more radiation, but it goes up a couple hundred times more if I turn the Wi-Fi on. And the particularly dangerous zone around, in this case, this laptop, is one meter from the laptop. So I would be sitting in a danger zone. You How about would, me? You would be in what I recall or call the cautionary zone, and the technical names for them is I'm in the near field zone, and you're in the intermediate or transition zone. The once you get into the far field, which in this case is beyond four meters, radiation you don't have a lot of what is called spectacular peaks and valleys and radiation that that's when everything stabilizes and you can use meters like this at that point to measure it. When you're inside, meter, most meters that you see to measure radiation can't measure in the near the field. field. So, and again, the near field is one meter. So most of us, if we're using a laptop, and is a cell phone the same or? No, a cell phone is different. It's a ratio of the frequency and the size of the antenna. Uh, with a cell phone, it's approximately 10 centimeters. Is the four inches is the danger zone with them? Uh, so that's not good. So you, if you've got a cell phone, you should really be holding it at yeah, least, but it, and that's but if the it's minimum. In your hand, even, that's and, not well, it would become useless, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, now, when you get to uh, cell towers, are the large parabolic dishes on top of a rooftop. Now you're getting up to a very large distance to the near field. The intermediate field is even further out. But the near field could easily be 10 to 12 meters in front of the uh, parabolic antenna. No one under any circumstances should ever go in front of there. And before a roofer goes up on a roof, for example, there should be someone that goes up and tests for radiation and they should be measuring, not with a meter like this, but they should be measuring the electric field and the magnetic field separately. And when WorkSafe looks at it, I've looked at some of their investigations, they don't measure these independently. Even though people like the BC Center for Disease Control Radiation Specialist he and I have discussed things and he's told me under no circumstances should you go up on a rooftop without measuring these readings independently. Industry Canada also says... How about underneath? Be the people who live or work uh, well, on the next floor or the next couple of floors? To a certain extent, the idea of a parabolic antenna is to focus the beam. So there will be some coming in depending on how the beam is focused and aimed. There is a study out of Japan though that says that they found people with cell towers on the roof of 10-story apartment buildings when the antennas were turned off they noticed health improvements when they were living on the first floor. So there is an effect, there, a much bigger halo effect than just the level of radiation I'm talking about. And that's why when I say that with a cell phone you should hold it to avoid the near field at least 10 centimeters away from your head. Actually, you should probably hold it a kilometer away from your head. To that, it, the, so I the, think what you're saying is there is 
uh, risk to your health, or not even a risk, uh, there is da damage to your health. It's, uh, it's well known and well proven there is uh, from some... From using a cell phone. From using a cell phone. Any Wi-Fi. And any, any device that is transmitting a radio signal. And that includes things like baby monitors, uh, your a wireless router that someone has at home that you can just go on down the list. There's a great many devices now that smart meters are exactly the same discussion. And they have, if people take full advantage of the smart meter, they should have their electric appliances so they can talk to the smart meter. So that would mean that electric appliances in their homes are going to have quite a large danger zone around them as well, in addition to, shall we say, the general relatively minor electrical field that is around any device now. And just in terms of, of the smart meter talking to your appliances, that's, that's, is that already happening? Yes, some devices do have what they call the ZigBee chip in it, which communicates with the smart meter ZigBee chip. I know of no one that is actually using it, but the, you are finding that coming out in some of the newer appliances now. If you're not using it, it's still working is, or not? The, from what I can understand, the ZigBee chip in the appliances, if it's there, is wired directly in that you, it has to be on even if you're not using it. Yeah. Um, so what are the dangers? Of, is it, I mean, I've always thought it's like smoking. I think that's probably a good comparison in a lot of ways that. And we know where that led. Yeah. I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot of pain and suffering and death caused by smoking. Well, there's definitely, I mean, the World Health Organization classified electromagnetic radiation as a to be possible carcinogen. They are now talking, a lot of scientists are saying, no, it should be moved up to a category one. It is a carcinogen. Everybody because I never hear that uh, come up in, in the discussion anywhere. You know, you, you, you watch the news, you read the newspapers, you listen to the radio. I don't hear that ever mentioned as an issue that anybody should be concerned about. No, the, I believe the Cell phone business is a $2 trillion business worldwide. So there's tremendous amounts of money that it's to their benefit to keep pushing more and more wireless out there. That, but when you talk about the health, that there's the cancer, that they found cancer clusters around cell towers that are quite specifically associated to them. Uh, one thing that I have to admit I'm not particularly concerned about now, uh, but there's fertility problems that a lot of people are getting that are directly associated with radiation as well as almost in conjunction with it, but it's Tyson with cancer as well, is damage to your DNA that you've had Dr. Blank on the show several times and everything he says that's well backed up, it's very solid. If anything, he's, he's holding back and not saying what some of the other, how much more it could be that... Well, what, are, what is being said in, in the field? Um, in the media, almost nothing is being said. Uh, there's... In the scientific world? In the, well, they have found uh, a strong connection to autism caused by it. There, uh, in my case, because of the radiation, I got an acoustic neuroma tumor, which is why the side of my face isn't the way it should be. Um, a lot of people get tinnitus, or not, yeah, tinnitus in their, in their ear. Um, other situations are, they get a mental fog in thinking, they can get migraine class headaches, very distinct headaches, very similar to what I understand a migraine is. And it, it kind of depends in part on how sensitive you are. I recently met someone who was quite sensitive and finds it very hard to live in the city. And that's also, in, in European countries, it's an acknowledged 
essentially illness or disease, people who are a little more sensitive than the rest of us and there simply is, can't survive in the... There is a community in the eastern states that has a large radio telescope in the community and they don't allow radio frequency transmitters of almost any description in the town. A lot of people are migrating there. We in BC are lucky that near Penticton we also have a radio frequency, uh, a radio telescope and to the best of my knowledge people haven't started focusing on that location near Penticton but that may be a good place for, well people like myself that I find quite often just even walking down the street I can get into a high radiation zone and I can literally have trouble walking. I get disoriented, I'm staggering around and a little bit later on I'm okay. That can you measure those high zones? Well a meter like that that I have will measure in the far field and give you a reasonably usable number but in the near field you need a meter that would cost literally many thousands of dollars or what they, another one is a spectrum analyzer. They're and expensive the, and most people don't know how to use them. And the near field is when you're simply close to when the you, radiating yes. device. So get, let's get back to this laptop. What's, I mean, if somebody's actually got it on their lap and they're using it in a wireless mode, this is probably not a good thing to do. If they're using it, where, no, it's, it's a very bad thing to do that, as a matter of fact, for a while I did use this computer on my lap and before I realized the problems and my legs were getting incredibly itchy to the point of painful itches and I was developing a what looked like a welt in my abdomen. Yeah, so you're more sensitive now than... Yes. Uh, no more at a time. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. It's like to warn people about this. And, um, oh, there's a... Do you want to mention the book on the... or? Well, I'll, I'll be putting more information on the Bridge News website uh, with a link to a book about cell tower sighting and placement which explains a lot of the technical details about radiation. Thanks very much for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.